I'm in St Peter's Vere Street in the West End, and I've just been listening to the results of a survey by the Evangelical Alliance working with Christian Research of 17,000 evangelicals. We've conducted a big piece of research last year to take a snapshot of the beliefs and habits of evangelical Christians in the UK, and today we've launched uh, the initial report from that research with some um, top level findings. And how many people have been surveyed? Um, 17,000 people uh, completed questionnaires at Christian festivals throughout last year and randomly selected Evangelical Alliance member churches. And what are the headline figures? Um, firstly, we found out that there is a whole set of beliefs and practices which unite Evangelical Christians. So Evangelical Christians, they go to church weekly, they give money, they're likely to volunteer. Um, they read their Bible regularly. Their faith is very important in their in their lives. Um, so that was one of the key findings. There's a whole set of beliefs and practices that unite us as evangelical Christians. We also found out that we're distinct and we're different from Christians who are not happy to call themselves evangelical Christians. Um, the Bible takes a more central role in our faith. The faith takes a more central role in our lives. Phil, you said one of the disappointing things was that um, not more evangelicals were actually evangelists. Yes, it was, it was one of the um, interesting uh, points of data we found in that a lot of people associate evangelicals with evangelism, but actually only six out of ten evangelicals are talking to a non-Christian about their faith once a month, which seems quite low, really. Could you tell me about the different profiles in terms of newspaper readership? Yes, yeah, so the four most uh, popular newspapers amongst the evangelicals are the Times, followed by the Daily Telegraph, then the Daily Mail, and then the Guardian. And there's quite a distinction between each of those groups of people. So on one hand, you have uh, Daily Mail readers, and they're more likely to be conservative in their beliefs. But on the other end of the scale, you have Guardian readers, who are far more likely to be progressive and more liberal in their beliefs. So in the middle, you have the Times and the Daily uh, telegraph readers, which are generally fairly similar and what I would call typical of evangelical uh, Christians in this country. So what would a Times reading evangelical believe? Um, they would believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God. Um, they would um, be more likely to believe that sex before marriage is wrong compared to a Guardian reader. Um, they would have varying um, beliefs on women in leadership, for example. So some would be for it, some would be against it. They'd have a mixture of beliefs concerning abortion and assisted suicide. So we see a whole range of beliefs happening um, amongst that group of people. Um, key things, though, is they would be reading their Bibles, and they would be giving money um, to the churches and charities, and they would be volunteering in activities that um, benefit the local community. And what would Guardian reading evangelicals believe? Um, Guardian reading evangelicals uh, would be much... Um, more comfortable with the, uh, the diversity of faiths that are now um, present in the UK. Um, they'd be much more concerned about um, environmental um, issues. Guardian readers would be less likely uh, to believe that hell is a place of kind of eternal torment uh, for the condemned. Um, they'd be more likely to agree that evolution and Christianity are compatible. Um, times are probably typical of evangelical Christians, um, which probably means that three out of ten um, are unsure on what they believe, um, with a further uh, two out of ten disagree with it. But yes, five out of ten would agree to some extent that hell isn't a place of eternal punishment. Isn't? Is. 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 Five, yeah. And one of the, another surprising thing about the survey generally was among the young people, um, there was a stronger tendency to oppose women in leadership among the young, wasn't there? Yeah. It was something which surprised us. We expected that to relate very much to age. Um, it raises a whole host of questions, and um, perhaps primarily is where are young people getting this belief from? And that's why we're very keen to ask further questions about this to find out what's influencing their beliefs. Why do they believe what they believe? Because that does seem to stand at odds at what you would expect. Now you also showed us a graph um, showing quite dramatically declining um, um, evangelicalism down the age groups with it you know, sinking quite rapidly among the young. Is this a cause of worry for the evangelical movement? It could be, or it could not be. In many ways, this survey has revealed there's differences amongst under 25-year-olds, but 
equally, um, they're typically evangelical. Um, so it might mean that they're rejecting the label evangelical rather than the beliefs and practices. So it might mean that younger people just are not using the word, the name evangelical. Perhaps they come to use that later on in life. One reason why this is probably the case is that young people just don't know what the word evangelical actually means. So they wouldn't want to call themselves an evangelical Christian until they've figured out what the term evangelical means. And potentially the word evangelical has all kinds of um, negative associations when people hear it on the news is often um, associated with kind of very conservative American politics, which is sure to influence young people's So what does it actually mean, Phil? I'd say um, it, it's reinforced by this research that evangelicals um, believe in Jesus, that the Bible is a central part of um, our beliefs, and we believe that we are saved by having a relationship with Jesus. Right. Four out of ten believed in tithing, um, which is giving 10% of the income, but actually only three out of ten did tithe. So how are the discrepancy? I, I think in um, the discrepancies aren't surprising at all in that we, we thought there'd be more discrepancy between what people believe and how it actually impacts their behaviour. On that, we're in a very hard economic climate. So I guess what's encouraging is that so many people are still giving either 10% or um, at least something to churches, local charities. It's Amy or Ewing, and I'm the UK Director for the Zacharias Trust. And I'm Ruth Valerio, and I work with Spring Harvest throughout the year, and I'm also involved with a Christian environmental charity called Arosha. When people think of evangelicalism, they think of one mass blob of people who are very definite and know exactly what they believe and won't tolerate anyone who thinks anything different. But actually this research shows that we differ on a whole variety of issues and so the evangelicalism is a broad spectrum rather than just one single thing. What were the differences that surprised you most? Um, well, there were ethical differences reflecting, I think, the dilemmas that we see in society over abortion and assisted suicide. Um, sadly, there were some differences over women in leadership and whether women can be allowed uh, to, have all, to be in all positions of leadership. Which Young is, people were surprisingly conservative, weren't they, on that one? Yeah, they were, but I'm not entirely convinced whether that would be representative. They, yeah, I, I think they didn't, in terms of the scope of the survey, they didn't capture the no. breadth of the emerging youth movement like Souls of Bible Momentum, they no. weren't included in that. Now, Amy, it's very interesting because um, you made an, a good point about apologetics and pietism. And one of the things that came out from the survey was that young people are not reading the Bible. The survey brought out um, differences over the Bible and particularly with younger people having questions about um, what the Bible is. That was one of the things it brought it that it brought out the authority of the scriptures and then the second thing was that they don't read it as much as older evangelicals and I think I was trying to make the point that those two things are linked and as church leaders um, we need to try harder really at making sure our teaching is relevant to the questions of a um, secularising agenda and to a kind of multiple worldview culture which young people live in so that apologetics rather than pietism should be the focus of, of our teaching. But, but can, can a book, it's the 400th anniversary this year of the King James yes. Bible, yeah. but the actual Bible of course is hundreds of years older than that, yeah. and can a book that's so old and so rooted in antiquity really have anything to say to today's young people? Well I would argue yes, the Bible is um, written in consecutive cultures over a period of 1800 years, but is contains timeless truth and teaching that has transformed societies in the past and still is today. And <coughs> thousands of young people, that is their experience today as evangelical Christians. What's your favourite Bible verse? At the moment, probably John 20, 31. Um, Jesus did many miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, but these are written that by believing in them you may have life in his name. And I think that really connects... Um, the reality of the historical truths of the person of Christ and our belief in him enabling us to live today in the power of the Holy Spirit. And what's yours? It's the verse in Micah, to love mercy, act justly and to walk humbly with your God.